Hello everyone. In this video, we will implement normalizing flows for images. Since images can be treated as multidimensional data, we will be extending the ideas we explored in the last video for 2D data and see how we can extend them for images. So as usual, a brief recap of the things we have done so far. So in the last video, we saw the relationship between probability density of x and probability density of z where z is f of x and uh, it is given by p of x equals p of z times the absolute value of the determinant of Jacobian of the function f which maps x to z. And we also observed that if we made z1 to be independent of z2 then the value of this determinant would be the product of its diagonal values and uh, we would like to extend this idea for multi-dimensional data so let's see how we can do that say we have a data with n dimensions and uh, we want to make it easy to evaluate the value of this determinant so what we want to do is we want to set these values dz1 by dx2, dz1 by dx3 and so on to be equal to 0. In other words, we want all the values in the upper half of this matrix to be equal to 0. If that's the case, then the value of this determinant would be equal to the product of its diagonal entries. What this means is that we want z1 to be independent of x2, x3 and so on. We want z2 to be independent of x3, x4 and so on. And in general, we want the variable zi to be independent of xi plus 1 and so on. And this property is known as autoregressive property. So in this case, these variables x1 to xn are actually the pixels from an image and for each pixel we would like to know a CDF to map the value from Xi to Zi and because most of these CDFs are going to be conditioned on X1 to Xi we would be using the same idea of using a complicated function to determine the weights mu's and sigmas of the CDF and then map the value at the pixel i which is equal to xi to zi. So let's see how to implement this. In this case we will be using the shape dataset whose source is given at the bottom of the screen. So these are very small images of simple shapes like stars, triangles, rectangles and so on. So these shapes have been stored in a file named shapes.pkl and uh, the link to this file is this and it will also be available in the description of the video. So we simply open the file and then create a simple dataset to read the values from this file using the standard PyTorch dataset pipeline. We use a batch size of 128. Now let's come to the central idea of implementing a CDF for each pixel xi. So what we want to do is, say given an image, we would like to have a stack of convolutions, masked convolutions, which would give a CDF corresponding to each pixel of the image. And this stack of CDFs would map each pixel to the transform variables z which we would like to be uniform and for that we want the output at point i to be a function of all the points only up to i so we do not want our convolution to see the values after the point i and that can be implemented by having a kernel whose whose points after the center pixel are equal to zero. And uh, 
we can get this kernel by having any kernel multiplied by a mask whose values are zero at the points after the center pixel. So let's see how we can implement mask convolution which does this for us. So a masked convolution is basically an extension of the standard convolution and uh, the only difference here is that we have a mask which is implemented like so. So the mask, the values of the mask depend on the width and height of its kernel and uh, we set the values to be equal to zero at places which are after the center pixel. And then we multiply the weight of the kernel with the mask to make sure that no matter what the kernel is, it never sees values after i. And this ensures that the autoregressive property is maintained. Now we would like to define a class of stacked convolutions where all of these masked convolution layers are stored. And uh, for that we define a class named auto regressive flow. It looks complicated but all it's doing is creating a stack of mass convolutions, some non-activation layers, in this case ReLU, and layer normalization. And once we have that, we can simply calculate the transformation of each pixel value to its corresponding z value by using the mu's, sigmas and weight logits which are an output of the stack of mass convolution layers that we just defined. The loss function remains the same and even in this case we define the target distribution to be uniform and that's it. So the idea is the same as uh, what we saw in the last video for 2D data and the only difference is that for images to make sure that the autoregressive property is maintained the value at dimension i does not depend on values from dimensions i plus 1 to n we have to be clever about defining the kernel or defining the convolution in such a way that it doesn't break the autoregressive property and once that is done Everything else is uh, pretty much the same as what we did before. Now let's see what the output looks like. So here we have two rows of the output data and we have some background noise which can be easily removed by having a threshold. And uh, you can see how it's done in the notebook attached in the link which is shown in the description below. and. Uh, we can see how the how the model learns to generate these samples. That's it for this video. And uh, in the last video, we will see another technique for implementing normalizing flows, which does not use CDFs. Thank you and see you in the next video.